Lots to cover state of the state and an important trial going on in the community as well. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you at part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. Welcome aboard. Great to have you. State of the State last night is always full of pomp and circumstance. We'll talk about that. And uh, we will have an extensive conversation with Giovanni Ferrosi, who's uh, well known in the business community as a success story. A little bump in his road right now. And how do you recover from a bump in the road in business? You run for governor. It's just pretty much part of the formula, don't you think? We'll, uh, we'll have some fun with Gio on that coming up. Uh, in a moment. Thanks for tuning in. All right, uh, let's get to it. This headline uh, has, has been kind of a, a lingering cloud over the Providence school system and this principal, Violet Lamar, who uh, was dismissed with pay from the Kazarian Elementary School after charges were brought against her for not reporting to DCYF a sexual assault situation or a series of them charged against a gym teacher within a 24-hour period of time. That mugshot just breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. I've, I've been following this case in, in the Kent County Court. There's the gym teacher who's alleged to have committed the, the crimes, right? Uh, the, uh, uh, the principal took the stand today. I was only able to attend for 10 minutes because of, of schedules. Uh, I watched the defense try to make a motion for dismissal on constitutional and sexual abuse definition measures. It was heartily ridiculed by the prosecution and immediately dismissed by the judge. However, She's her best defense. In the first 10 minutes that she took the stand today, I was thinking, first of all, she's the perfect principal. She actually reported this thing out after she had covered it with the kids, at least the initial uh, uh, report, uh, moments after they left her office. And the gym teacher was dismissed in that day. Um, she discharged the entire issue to human resources. And now you've got all these people in the chain of command in the city of Providence who are not charged with anything. And she's got a mug shot and a charge and a misdemeanor that ruins her career. I am, I'm praying for her, actually, that she will beat this case. How it works out in the next couple of days is anybody's guess, but stay tuned. Uh, in the meantime, the Paw Sox had a big moment in the Senate yesterday, headline here in the Providence Journal on both the state of the state and the Paw Sox development. And here was the uh, tail end of the vote. 26 votes in the affirmative, nine in the negative, and the act passes. Pretty much uh, by rote, fait accompli in the Senate. Now it goes crashing into the House or limping into the House, depending on your point of view. The Speaker of the House has never been more wishy-washy. And I will challenge him about that coming up on Monday. He'll be our guest Monday. In fact, we have both the Senate President, the Governor, and the Speaker of the House scheduled Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So make, uh, make an appointment for those particular shows. Um, Loose conversations about referendums. I don't know where it stacks in the deck. In the meantime, I'll tell you, we go to a referendum, the Paw Sox head out to town. They, they go to Worcester. They're not going to spend a million dollars on a referendum that's gone on this long. Uh, sometimes you got to step up and lead or get the heck out of the way. Sounds like Gio Ferrochi in some of his speeches. Uh, we'll get his take on this. I don't think he and I agree on that either, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, in the meantime, the governor, uh, very, very re-election modi last night. Kind of a campaign celebration rather than an acute budget address, that's for sure. State of the state, roll it. Let's come together and make a once in a generation investment to fix our public schools. <laughs> Governor Gina Raimondo eliciting a standing ovation from the crowd when she proposed spending a billion dollars over five years to fix Rhode Island school buildings. There are teachers, we've all seen it, teachers putting trash bins in the middle of the classroom to collect the water dripping from the leaky ceiling. After a study showed hundreds of millions of dollars are needed to keep schools warm, safe and dry, we saw schools closing last week after pipes burst and heating failed. Ramonto continuing to make the fight against opiate addiction a priority. Overdose deaths were down in Rhode Island last year by 8 percent. But even one death is too many. Proposing a requirement that health insurance companies cover addiction and mental health treatment like any other disease. 
The governor also touting her accomplishments from her first term as her re-election bid approaches, including the roadworks plan to fix roads and bridges, a tax incentive program that has helped bring businesses to the state, job training programs, and free tuition at CCRI. It's on us. It's on all of us to make sure that every single Rhode Islander has the job training and education that they need to get a good job. Not everyone because liked her no message. Republican House Minority Leader Patricia Morgan and Cranston Mayor Alan Fung were both in the chamber for the speech, each of them hoping to prove to voters later this year that they should get Raimondo's job. So all these new programs that she's going to be tacking on to the state budget, a budget that is already out of control in deficit mode. I just kept saying, Ka-ching, ka-ching. Every program, everything that she said, boy, we have to go forward with this, they cost money. That money comes from somebody. Wouldn't that be interesting, Joe, if we could have like a, a running register when, you're, when, when, when we've got like a State of the Union or a State of State address and you start rolling the actual cost of every idea, like Pat Morgan was saying, that's not such a bad idea. Huh? No, that's probably a good idea, actually. But that's only if you're going to have this kind of thinking, this uh, old school thinking, I call it, um, people continuing to want to do patchwork rather than actually uh, launch in the new business world, you know, the new, the new way ahead. And that's what uh, I hope you get out of my, my conversations all the time. It's, it's a vision. It's feeding a plan. It's understanding that we've, we've changed. We've moved on. Hmm. We now have cars. You know, we're not, we're not in the horse and buggy stage anymore. Welcome. Good to see you. Nice to see you as well. So Thank you. You, you decided, you know, let, let's get into the who you are, what you are, and, and all of these different yous that, uh, that, that you portray a little bit later in the show. Uh, give, me some, give me some of that more thought on, on the state of, of the state. What was, your, what was your take? Again, a Republican candidate here uh, sure. announced... I mean, you're in, uh, is there a balloon ceremony? Are you announced? I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll do that on my birthday in uh, May 29th. Why not? Uh, oh, it'll God. be my 50th birthday. We gotta We're going to have a big oh, party. Really, i got to yeah. write that down. 50th birthday. Get <laughs> but, you. Uh, I, think, uh, I think pretty much we've, uh, <laughs> we, we've said we're going to be in this race, and, uh, and I am. I'm going to be in the race. And, and we means the people that are with me, which is a, a very large voice. You know, it's the voice of common sense. It's not a, uh, an anti voice. It's not a. Um, you know, we just want to hold on for dear life. So voice. talk to me about last vision. night. Tell me about last night. Tell me about the Ramondo vision. What, what, sure. what, what, what is it that you took from her presentation last night? Well, well, let's use the biggest item first, right? When you say we're going to spend a billion dollars, right? And everyone, I think, was waiting for the, for the pinky in the mouth. It's a fake number, you know, by the way, but I want to but, hear your thoughts. But, but, you know, some, saying you're going to put a billion dollars towards something. Again, it's what do you do with that? So someone who is educated, experienced as I am, first of all, that's a capital raise, right? So you would go to the private market, you try and raise capital. You have to put down a use of proceeds. Well, if your business model doesn't work, if you're showing them antiquated systems, you're going to throw good money after bad money, uh, all things that don't work, well, nobody's going to give you that money. So I start there. I start with the thinking that education, educate tours and educational institutions are changing at such a rapid pace. First, you have to identify what is it going to look like? What's the end state look like? And whatever that number is, then you determine which of these institutions are we willing to save and invest some money in? Which ones have to be completely scrapped? Which ones don't we need? I had my son as a junior trying to quit school, you know, asking me, hey, listen, uh, you know, Dad, do I really have to finish, you know, uh, he went to James Madison University. Do I have to finish this? Can I just, you know, I could do this one thing. I'm done in eight months. I already do know what I have to do. In other words, the rapid way in which we're educating uh, those that are actually working, you know, in the Silicon Valleys, in the, in the you know, big institutional uh, footprints that are changing the world, they're not sitting in these classrooms getting educated the way we used to always do it. And so that's where I start. It's a big, big understanding okay, of So that's your answer on, on the school funding thing. By the way, sure. know this. It, it's, a, it's a half of, we, we already fund half of what she announced last night. Mm -hmm. Have you t have you studied the budget? The, the billion the, dollars. The only raise is a is a refer is a referendum. Um, I believe in eighteen and then again in twenty two, of two hundred fifty million dollars. It's a bond issue. It, she wants to raise a half a billion dollars, but the billion dollars already has a half a billion dollars built in it. Over five years, we already have a formula for reimbursing the local school systems <laughs> for the work that they do. So the billion dollars was a half a billion phony. But the, well, again, I appreciate the the, the specifics. For me, it doesn't even matter. What matters is 
how you use the proceeds. So again, even that half a billion, if it's identified in her plan, then okay, you're halfway there to her plan. I'm saying that we need to completely change things. So I think it's important, a visionary, you know, what is a visionary? A visionary is someone who comes in and says, you know what, I want a phone with one button. <laughs> you know, that's a st Steve Jobs, right? Or you have someone that comes in and says, you know, I'm going to completely disrupt everything. How do, you, how do you behave, right? A Jeff Bezos. Someone that says, we're going to completely change the way we do things. And that's going to be the, the people that I attract. Okay, I stop, want stop right there. Because I want to hear make what sure they so, have that. So how do you articulate your vision for the state? We'll do that when we come back. In the meantime, I just want to remind you folks uh, that you can finance your entire world right in the palm of your hands with the Card Valet app from Navigant Credit Union. Simply download it from the App Store and become a member online at NavigantCU.org. Know that they've grown to 18 locations now with uh, two in Kent County and one in Washington County, meaning Navigant Credit Union is now a statewide credit union. We'll be right back with Giovanni Corso. decisions. Statistically, I know I'll get a couple wrong. I don't care. I operate at battlefield speed. I love, I, I, from, from a pure entertainment point of view, I, I love that video. Uh, it's, it's part of what you coughed up a couple of weeks ago, a whole bunch of social media stuff. We'll talk about your, your approach in, in the next segment, not this one. But the battlefield speed mentality, it don't, I'm looking at a whole bunch of paperwork here. It's responses from Republicans to the Democratic presentation. It's all the nuances of arguing particular bills and ideas. And it seems to me that you don't even want to get into that paradigm, that, that you have a whole, I don't know, I don't know if I have to have a cerebral operation, smoke some dope. I can't figure out what I need to do to get on your wavelength, but I have understood one thing. I got to get on another wavelength to understand what the hell you're trying to say about this governor's race, right? Perfect. Got it. So when you talk about Bezos and you talk about uh, all these other visionaries, what, be as clear and as elementary as you can. What is your vision? That, what is this concept that you want everybody to understand? Okay. So we need to be in a completely different connected and, uh, you know, logistical infrastructure world, period. So if you don't think you're, you know, I have five kids. If, if, for those who don't think one of my children is going to be in a flying car, then you're not paying attention. You know, did I ever think that was going to be the case five years ago? No, I probably would have said, no, it'll never happen in my lifetime. Maybe in there, we'll see. But it's happening at rapid speed. What's going to happen is robots are making robots, right? So a lot of things are happening. So what is our play? If you study uh, most of today's, you know, leaders, business leaders, et cetera, we're realizing that it's funny, the, the bachelor's degrees that are going to be important are the philosophy, <laughs> all of those things that are going to allow for humans to, you know, manage systems. And so what does Rhode Island look like? At the end of the day, we have 39 cities and towns. You know, what our children need to have as homes are going to change dramatically. And so if you think of how I think, it's the following. Somebody in 1972 built my neighborhood in West Warwick, the one I ended up in. It was the first one that had underground wiring. Okay, I believe it was Furland, actually, was the builder, okay? He was way ahead of his time. You know, think about it. Later on, we had cable. Cable ended up underground with those wires. Uh, most of Rhode Island did not have that. He was ahead of his time. Everybody went that way. Prior to us moving into a raised ranch, there were ranch homes. Prior to that, there were triple-deckers. Prior to, yeah, to that, there were, you know, duplexes, what have you. Same thing now. What are we looking at? Tiny homes? What were they called when we were kids? Mobile homes, <laughs> right? You would laugh at them. Now, those are actually the structures that should be built. The price points, $80,000, that makes sense for a young person that wants to have mobility and flexibility. You might want to take a job in Charlotte for four years, go work at whatever bank, take your home with you, then come back to Rhode Island when you're done that deployment. All of those things need to get away from being the far out there conversation. They need to be brought into Rhode Island. And what does, okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. So what does that translate to in terms of your governance? So it starts at the top, right? So you have to prov provide the vision. So I believe you go 25 years out. You say, okay, in the 25 year period, what are the things we need to connect? I believe we need to connect public safety, right? Someone needs to be able to go from their home 
let's just say one of my big ideas was to empty the Providence Place Mall. Happens to be in the news the last few days, but it makes sense anyway. Regardless if it was offered as Amazon, as I would have done to be the headquarters, or it becomes just housing, right, because we have a lack of housing in Providence. Someone's got to be able to take an elevator, hit that button, end up on Westminster Street, where I would dump all the stores that are in the Providence Place Mall onto, or into a train station, know I can get out safe, safely, move to my next point of destination and keep going, right? Maybe you want to go to Newport, you do the stop into Whitford, you keep on going to wherever you have to go. Those kinds of, mo uh, of movements all the way down to URI and back, that is pretty much a done deal in the New Jerseys of the world. They've been doing it for years. You hop a train, you grab something out on a, a ferry out of uh, Atlantic Highlands. You do things that we in Rhode Island don't have as a default way of moving. And so the governance part of it means that's the infrastructure we build. So when we talk union, unions, and yes, I'm a Republican, right? One would say, well, obviously you're going to be anti-union. This, that. It's not that I'm anti-union. It's that I'm not going to follow bad investments and I we're going to disagree on the on the Pawtucket uh, you know Red Sox do I think they should remain absolutely do I support them absolutely would I advertise there absolutely but I know that they can borrow money on their own money at two percent <laughs> why would you even involve the state of Rhode Island it makes no sense uh, they would never even ask me that that's the difference because I, they know the level of play that I'm at uh, I, I, I speak their language but bringing it back down. Uh, yeah, well, the language that they speak within their own industry is such that private public partnerships have always been leverage uh, against communities. And in fact, they're putting in more money than any other, uh, any other team in the league. And so mm -hmm. in that paradigm, sure. they're actually doing more, not less, than their competitors. And, and they can present it that way. I personally am, you know, I built a company, 1,000 jobs from zero, never asked the state for a dime for a reason. I just want to be left alone. Yeah, but there's a difference. So you're, you're, the industry that you are in is not is not in a, in a condition of of taxpayer environment. So this well, is the, the, so you know we. It need, would be now under huh? under this governor. It would be anybody who has any type of job offering would be point taken. So I just can you imagine the millions only you new, would have only, given only, me? Only new ventures, not 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 not, but to, not job sustenance. But but to tie it into the union point, my point is they're going to be so busy and have so much work building the infrastructure, the new infrastructure that I have put together in the vision, in the plan for Rhode Island, all this other stuff isn't going to be a big in, okay, you know, so, play so situation. The plan, is the plan like to be published? Is that what this is? This Absolutely. Is, this so, is, in March, so, so we suffer now from, from so what me, is the pregame concept <laughs> that makes everyone on the couch right now say, God, he sounds so blank and smart, but what's he talking about? Well, there's two, there's two, things, two <laughs> parts to the process, and, and I think this is important, right? If we were in business, right, would I not have you sign an NDA before I show you the plan, right? Yeah. So let's just put it in the political context. Well, I'm in a race. That'd be right? a non-disclosure agreement for those oh, of you oh, who aren't business sophisticated. <laughs> but I'm, yeah. a, I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in a race, right? So to present everything I'm doing right now and have everybody aim their money and their comments and everything and just fight me yeah. from, from January all the way down makes no sense well, for here's me. The thing I want to present it in it. a way that I can ultimately get it accomplished because I need to get elected. Here's the thing that would be easy for me and everybody else. More importantly, else. Rhode Island needs to elect me. Uh, the thing that would be easy for me and everybody else is for you to say at the beginning, hey, listen, i got a plan. A lot of it's coming out in May, but let me talk to you about some concepts. When we come back, <laughs> let's talk to him. Let's talk to Thank Joe Ferrosi about his, well, about him. Stay with us. So there was a, a post on social media that kind of flipped my bird. Uh, I'm not exactly sure um, what you were thinking with this when you suggested that you wanted to ask people with this picture of a party. By the way, is that fun, all those people in, the, in, in a pool like that? Once in a while. You yeah, cannot, you, it's you, not you, my bag. I'll tell you, you have to leave much. Vegas after a day. You look good, sure. though. You're still in that shape? You are, you I know, think. You know, I think I'm going nice. to try and get back there. All right. But keep shaking hands. And the... The, the idea you were, ta you were asking in your text, um, do you think you're doing me a favor if you're voting for me, or do you think I'm doing you a favor? Uh, da -da 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 -da, you know the answer. It was very cocky. 
You yep. know what? I, you're running for office. You're asking for my vote. Do I want you to do? Do, do I benefit from successful leadership? Absolutely. But that's a question the that I think is just way out of bounds. Well, I think I think the wording definitely could be better, and I and I know that um, you know I I put it out there to say that mm -hmm. uh, exactly that. Yeah, we've that had the I would, argument already. I would word it. I would word yeah. it a little bit differently. But I don't want to get a. Uh, I don't want to minimize the point I was making. The point is, you know, you have someone who was a state senator, you know, grew up in a blue collar town, been through the whole nine yards, has a bachelor's degree from URI, spent time in the military, both enlisted and as an officer, went to Warren School of Business to get trained in business, had small businesses, grew a billion dollar company, made money, lost money, had kids, have just the whole, you know, experience level. Matter of fact, you, you might, uh, well, you wouldn't know this, but in 2002, I actually sat down and said, what do I want to do with my life ultimately? And I want to come up with an experience test. I want to say, you know, what does that mean? So if someone says, oh, I was in the Army too. Okay, well, were you in two years and went for college money? Or were you in and you've seen combat? Or were you in and you lost a leg? Or were you in and you, you know, what's, what's the degree of experience? Someone who says, oh, I'm going to be a broadcaster or whatever. Okay, you've been doing it six months. I've been doing it 30 years. Like there's a level, level of experience. So in politics, the problem is we are part of a great experiment, right? At what point are we going to say that the experiment's kind of over and we need to see what works and what doesn't. And one of the things we're left with to work with is that age and residency are the only requirements to hold office. That is such a dangerous place that we're in right now. You want controversy? I'll give you controversy right out of this show. We think it's good that a waitress is voting on a nine and a half billion dollar budget. That is crazy. That is crazy to me. You're referring okay? to Representative Moira Walsh? Yeah, and I have nothing against her. I have nothing. Do I don't like her policies? But the fact that that can happen is just insane. It's insane that we have a nine and a half billion dollar budget and people who don't have an education in finance, et cetera, can do that. So, so you my wanna, answers so you, to so that. Do you think it's constitutional to provide a litmus test? No, for not at all. Here's my answer to that. Here's my answer to that. Okay. She could be a wonderful person. I don't know her. And she go ahead and get elected. But now let's take monies from the budget. And let's have a 30-day where a Wharton or a Harvard or other schools come in and give a training to that. So it wasn't me knocking anybody, because I'll tell you a quick story. After I was elected uh, as a state senator and I ran for lieutenant governor and lost to Bob Wagan, guess what I did? I went to waiter <laughs> at the pier house. I remember waiter, giving Joe McGear something to eat. And I'm like, isn't this funny? I was just a state senator. I'm bringing you a chowder. So I'm not knocking the profession. I'm not knocking her. But I have to use that level of example to say to you what I'm saying. Think about it. Think about who would be. And this is this is your embellishment on on the notion that you're that, the that level who's of, doing who a favor. The level of expertise that's required to manage and run this state and feed a vision. Well, here's a good news for you. You're a challenge to pound everything into an 18-minute segment. I will tell you that much. So that means you got to come back early and often. And I'll continue to pry out the plan, maybe before your birthday. And no, March and March is when I would like to get the plan out there. And we'll have to talk and about your financial situation at some sure. juncture on the radio, because I know that uh, you've been up and you've down. been down. Keep going. All right. Good to see you, man. You Thank as well. You. Thank uh, you for having me. All right. Thank you, everyone. We come back. Tell you what's up tomorrow. A lot of strife in Washington, right, coming out of the president's whole conversation, uh, which I hardly believe happened. The director of the Mixed Magic Theater in Pawtucket has a fascinating response to that and discussion of racial issues, and he'll be here tomorrow. See you on the radio as well at 3 until 6 on WPRO. Thanks for watching. We might have Representative Moira Walsh sooner, sooner than later, too, I'm guessing. Good night.